the fuck when you mess up a solid 10 minutes of recording by muting your mic after being on a rant. Anyways, I have a face game now, seeing as how this is the fifth time, was the fourth, that I have tried making a video with this thing. It's kind of lost its allure. It's just kind of here now, but... It's here now, it's part of how I'm going to do content. I'm probably gonna start streaming as a result of this. However, I wanna talk about group C and group B will be out soonish because there's two weeks left until Invitational and I still have three groups to break down on how I think they're gonna do. So with that said, let's get into uh, BR6 plus Giants Gaming. So Giants Gaming, I'm going to go through them first because after that it's just Latin American teams and why not just go down all of them as a group. Giants Gaming made a pretty decent run at Tokonami, uh, the Season 10 Pro League Finals. Beat Giants Gaming, which is now Rogue. There's an Oracle swap there. Don't worry about it. However, Rogue was a perpetual underperformer on land, so take their victory with a grain of salt there. However, it's still a legit win, and Rogue has shown that they don't always underperform, and they didn't look too, too out of sh out of shape on this particular tournament. However, their reputation still should be stated that Rogue was a, is a perpetual underperformer on land. And then Arrowwolf capitalized on that, and... Won and made a pretty decent attempt in the semifinals against Dark Zero. I think it was Dark Zero. Hey, anyways, the point is that uh, Giants Gaming made a pretty decent run. However, that was with Mentalist, and Mentalist has gone to Fnatic, which means that they lost a big player, especially given how. From what I've heard, Mentalist was a identity player or someone kind of like Joystick or Canadian. He defines the identity of the team and with that brings a lot to kind of reinforce it and shore up who this team is, what they're about, how they play. If you're on a team with Canadian, you have a big emphasis on counter strats and you have a lot of... Momentum. You are an emotional team, and you kind of see that with old EG. They got hype, they were excited, Canadian was the one just bringing them up when things were going well, and he was their counter strategist. He was their IGL. He was a big part of what made EG EG, and you can see that his absence since then, the team hasn't been the same to a large degree because everyone's passive, everyone's Mew, we all know that those are the quieter players and there's no one to fill in for what Canadian brought. And from what I understand, Mentalist is a lot of the same. So him being gone is a big impact to, uh, to Giants. I don't quite remember who they brought in. However, they did pick up Giggs as a coach. He was the former coach of Navi, not as Vincere, back when they made their run through Pro League into the finals of Tokonami, where they beat Dark Zero, and won the Season 10 Championships. So, how do I think this team is going to do? Well, I think we're going to do all right. Probably take a map, maybe two. They're a team that is good, and they have a solid foundation for gigs to build off of. He's clearly not coming in two weeks before the Invitational, there was probably a two to three week trial period with him to see if the team liked him. So he's been working with them for a while longer than I think most people will realize. However, even then, it's kind of, it's an APAC team, man. It depends on how well they adapt. But I think they have the potential to get out of this group as an X Factor but it's really, really gonna be hard. Liquid. I mean, it's Team Liquid. Uh, out of groups, 2-0. Send it. BDS. BDS takes it. All seriousness aside. All seriousness aside. Oh, shit. Um, 
All jokes aside, Liquid has been on a heater for a while. Ever since they returned back in, back to form with BR6, I believe was the start. Then they had a second place finish in DreamHack Montreal. And then they won OGA Pit. And I, they've been in a great run of form. I do not see them slowing down. Pardon? I do not see them slowing down in the lead up to SI. And in Pro League, they've kind of shown that. And of course, as SI comes closer and closer, you're going to see less and less of those teams competing at the event, wanting to show as much of their strats. The less recent the VOD content is, and the more default your strategies are, the less information your competitors in your group have against you. So teams will... Teams competing in SI will kind of drop in performance at least a little bit. Depends on the team. Clearly, TSM, for instance, is just going. Very, very, very gone for first place. But um, for the most part, there's going to be a slight dip in performance because you don't want to show all your strategies right before the biggest competition of the year. So as a result, Liquid is in that like third to fourth area, if I recall correctly, which puts them in an interesting spot. However, if you look at their form on LAN and just how insane Paula has been recently, I think they do fine. Nesk is looking in the best form he has been since he was the best player in the world during year two. That's He's looking insane. You combine, you combine that with Paula. Sexy Kick has always been a consistent rock for the team. Moringa's another supportive element, and then you just have... And then you have PSK as your flex fragger entry. That's a deadly... That is a solid team. They haven't been fucked with. They don't need to, like, deal with roster changes or anything. They have two coaching staff, plus Zig, who I'm pretty sure is still doing a lot with the team, either as a motivational aspect or a tactical aspect. Either way, he's adding a lot to the team, and if you watch their vlogs, you can kind of see that. So this team has been in incredible form. Hasn't really slowed down for a greater part of a half year, so I don't see them getting dropped in this group. Liquid through 2-0. NIP. NIP. Ninjas in pajamas. I refuse to talk about the org. However, the Latin American team is a much different... is a much different topic. The team always looks good online. They always do. They, they, they have that, like, they have that really nice play style. It's really interesting to see, having reviewed a few of their VODs, they have this really interesting, dedicated Rome, but who's also willing to fall back and then go for the flank again. It, like, more, more so than other teams in other regions. And I know that was in-house Latin American Pro League, which, as is always said, it's a bit of a clusterfuck in a very regional style. Matchup bans are way more common in Latin America than they are in any other region. So that needs to be addressed and that needs to be acknowledged. So their playstyle from recent VODs can't be taken as this is how they will play. However, in a group like this where it's BR6, that might not be the case. Quite frankly, they might just say, I bet it's BR6 plus some no-name APAC team. Yeah, we'll play Brazilian style here. Which, if they do, that'll be entertaining as fuck. However, that'll also have issues and make them more predictable. NIP, I've always seen as this volatile team. They're a very emotional team, from what I understand. And they definitely seem to have that, like, when they're on a heater, they're absolutely unstoppable, especially with Psycho and Muzi and Pino. However, they can just as easily just drop a ball and never get up. They are very much Team Liquid from CSGO. I know that's a little bit confusing because I mentioned Team Liquid, the R6 team, like two minutes ago. But if you know Liquid from CSGO, you know that they are some of the best gunners as far as superstar talent in North America that the, team, that the game has ever seen. However, if you look at their performance, when they get emotionally broken, they never recover for the rest of the game, possibly even for the rest of the tournament. So that leads to a lot of volatility. And with NIP, I see this as a lesser degree of that. They're just as emotional. They don't have as much firepower. 
I mean, most players from Latin America, firepower is just, gun skill is just so, so emphasized around there. More so than other regions. But even so, I, I just don't, they just don't have any significant results I can turn to and say, I see them doing a lot. At best, I see them going through groups. Maybe. It's going to be a scrape. It's going to be a scrape by. So with that all said, I see them as also middle of the pack. Probably above Giants, but definitely below Liquids. If you want if you want a, a light tier, Liquid up here. NIP down here. Eh, down here. And Giants Gaming is like here. And then NMIBR is right here. And let me explain why, because I have not addressed MIBR yet. But I'm going to. And uh, is no bueno. So, MIBR. I did not get the hype back during 2019 or 2018, back when they were Immortals. Super, at one point, had called them a top six team in the world around that time period, and I just didn't see it. Now, maybe I was missing something, because I am obtuse, and that's fair. But... Outside of their one just return to, not even return, just flash of inspiration during OGA Pit where they came in third, which was incredible to watch. It was incredible to watch, but I just don't see it happening again. MIBR's entire foundation and win condition is a lot more particular than other teams, which I think leads to their lackluster performance. For instance, they almost got relegated during Season 10. They barely scraped by. Otherwise, we would be seeing a Challenger League team from Latin America competing in SI 2020 right now. So just think about that. MIBR is, was almost a Challenger League team. And Latin American Challenger League isn't as closely contested as European Challenger League is probably not even clo as closely contested as North American Challenger League. And as every European player likes to point out, NACL is just a shit show, which it is. So, fair play. But, all of that aside, MIBR. They, their win condition is to have Novice, Cyber, and... Cyber Bullet and Navi's fucking fire off with M King and Hugzord as your supporting cast. The problem is that you can't just have one or two of those players pop off and everyone else play at a consistent level. Their win condition against other international teams is to have all three pop off. If if only one or two of them do, they just go out. They'll make it kind of close. But they just don't have enough firepower, and it's evident. If you look at any of their international performances, you only get one or two players firing off. You get that third one who's doing okay, but they just need to wake up and push them over the edge, and they never do. It's too common in their VODs to really say, yeah, I can see them doing it, breaking through this time. They beat G2... In OGA Pit, and my counterpoint to that is that the G2 that set the era, as I have been saying for a long time, is dead. That's not the same team. Is it? it no, no, no name value associated with that. That is not the same team. Do not treat them as the team that reigned dominant for two years plus. They're different. MIBR be a mid-level EU team. So MIBR be a pretty decent EU team. They beat Space Station Gaming. They lost to Liquid in OGA Pit, and then they lost to SSG in a rematch, which is common. That's understandable. Usually in those rematches, the team that lost wins again. So, third place finish at OGA. Outside of that, they honestly haven't had that many amazing results. They're even like middle of a pack that I am right now, so they just don't look that impressive. I think OGA was a one-off. If they get to another, if they get to another boot camp, they might make some entertaining matches. 
They can probably beat Giants or NIP in a one-off, but I doubt we'll see them win anything even closely enough to go into groups or get out of groups onto stage. So if I really had to make a hard statement of these are the teams that I think are going to make it into the stage matches, into the quarterfinals, it's going to be Liquid and Giants. Yeah, APAC. Now, APAC for life, clearly, because I said that Wildcard is making it through to the stage as well from Group D. I don't think that's a bias. I just think that APAC is much closer than people give it credit for. Plus, NIP and MIBR just don't have the consistency that I can say with certainty. I see those teams going through. So yeah, that's Group C.